Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop. A little bit of a home repair job here today. I've got my home automation system uh, which I use for the central heating and turning off and on lights and amplifiers and that sort of thing in the house. And I make use of these units here. These are um, TZ68Es. They're basically just smart plugs. Basically they're uh, uh, connected to the home automation system and via my iPad, PC, whatever I can control the output of this socket here, turning it on or off and I can, uh, on some other units anyway, I can also monitor the uh, power consumption etc on here. Um, so I make use of these here, uh, this is actually a TKB Home TZ68E, this is one of the working ones in the house that I've got. So if I just plug it in here You'll see that there's a little light comes on. It's actually a night light that signifies that the socket's off. And via the home control system, I can obviously turn that off and on as I see fit. And you can also press this little light here. It's actually a push button. You can press it and manually turn off and on the socket there as well. So that's a working one from the house. So I was looking to buy an extra couple of these things here. They're available in different ratings. This is actually a... 2,990 watt one, a 2.9 kilowatt one. You do actually get other ones, uh, lower ratings, they virtually look identical. Uh, it's a TZ67E, these are 300 watt units. So I spotted these on eBay as marked down as faulty. So I actually bought two of them here, uh, marked down as faulty. What the uh, description in the eBay ad says is when you plug it in, nothing happens. There's no light. Uh, manual no nothing so let me just plug that in there and see what happens nothing nothing at all now even if they're not paired to the Z wave controller I should still be able to manually control the the socket there uh, but obviously that's not happening, they're just completely dead exactly as the EBA, EBA ad says. So uh, first thing I'll do is uh, open one up and let's have a look inside. I'm hoping it's going to be something simple. I don't believe these will be fused. If they are, there's probably some surface mount fuse or some sort of inline protection maybe that's for an open circuit but we'll have a look not sure if somebody's been in here before they weren't exactly tight the screws there but well, let's have a look get all the screws out first there we go. so let's have a look Okay, just to give you a look as, as to what's inside one of these units here, um, we've basically got on this top PCB here, a little sub PCB here, that's the actual ZW0301 Z Wave controller, that's the actual technology that it enables the whole Z Wave to work there. So it's a, a standard off the shelf ZW031 uh, controller there. This won't be made by TKB, they've probably bought that in, hence it's a sub PCB in a slightly different colour green there, etc. So the rest of it, all the support and hardware around about it, uh, which, which actually does the IO uh, to the outside world, will be made by TKB by the looks of it there. So. Um, this actual switching and the actual power input, as you can see, uh, coming off the live and neutral there, goes onto the PCB underneath there. So I'll need to remove this top PCB to get underneath and have a look and see what's going on. Uh, I was just getting into it there, I'd removed the uh, the couple of plastic standoffs there from this edge of the PCB here. And then I noticed that actually there's a, a header, a jumper a uh, single in line header there that's actually soldered on to this top PCB there as you can see so I think I'm probably going to have to desolder that in order to get underneath uh, but before I do that I think I can access the screws down the side there that actually hold the whole thing in place so I'll try and remove them first and uh, maybe there's something obvious that uh, um, it's, it's effect that I can affect a repair uh, before I start desoldering headers here Right, a little bit further into it here, and a couple of little things I've noticed. 
Now, I'm not really sure whether these are genuine TKB home devices or not. I mean, I don't even know if these sort of things are cloned over in China or wherever, but the quality of the workmanship ain't that great. Um, I think I found a fault anyway, but by doing so I uncovered uh, one or two other little things here. Okay, with the circuit boards pulled out, let's have a look. So we've got the red wire coming in, that's the live feed from the live pin here coming up onto the PCB, the white wire here is a neutral pin I'll not worry about that at the moment, so the red wire is alive coming in and that's it there coming in there and uh, there's no track coming off of that pad there because there's actually an inline device there which goes between there and there and that's it there wrapped in that black heat shrink sleeving uh, some, some, and some sort of inline protection it's probably a fuse um, and measuring across there it's open circuit so uh, let's say it's a fuse it's open circuit but I think I know why it's blowing because if you look at this heat sink here it's actually loose there, but this little tab here is meant to go through the PCB, there's a little hole in the PCB for it, but it's loose and if I put my multimeter across the heat sink and one side of that fuse and push down on the, on this heat sink, it's actually shorted out. So what I think it is, is that's a an axial device with the top leg of that a fuse is just probably just bent down back onto and through the PCB there, and I think it's uh, shorted out onto the heat sink there. Because when you push that down, you do actually make a, a contact between the heat sink and, and one of those pads, and then when you lift it, it's open circuit again. So I think that's what's actually happening there. So I have removed it, and yes, it was a fuse just covered in heat shrink there, and as you can see the top of the fuse there is just bent over and down the side and that was obviously touching the, the metal of the heat sink there when it was uh, compressed a little bit and it's obviously blowing the fuse in uh, a rather big way so hopefully I'll just get away with uh, replacing the fuse with something else I'll see if I can find something that will fit in the same space and uh, hopefully nothing else is blowing hopefully it was just the fuse that went Right, I don't have anything in my stock that will replace this uh, uh, PCB mounting fuse, but I do have some surface mount uh, fuses. The original fuse here is 0.5 and of an amp. I've got these 315 milliamp. I've also got one amp versions of this um, SMD fuses, so I think I'll go for the 315 milliamp and solder that onto the back side of the PCB, and uh, we'll try that, and it should be uh, good enough. I've you know I've erred on the safe side by going down to 315, so hopefully we should be okay there. So there's the new 315 milliamp surface mount fuse soldered in place. The distance between the pads is just absolutely perfect for the fuse. Um, the only thing I've still got to do is I think I'll address the heat sink here because I don't want it to go up and touch the back of this PCB at the top here. I'm not sure if there's any tracks on that side, but there's certainly a what looks to be a ground plane on the back there, so I don't want the heat sink touching that. So I'll uh, push this heat sink down through its hole if I can. There we go. And uh, unfortunately, there's not enough to give the bracket a little twist on this side to hold it in place. So I might have to look at something else. I might need to put uh, some sort of insulator between the heat sink and the back of that PCB, and that might help hold the heat sink in place. So I'll away and do that now. Right, what I've actually gone ahead and done is I've put some heat shrink sleeving, just a, a layer of heat shrink sleeving, down between the heat sink and the underside of that PCB and it's kind of sandwiched itself in place. So I put a dab of silicone probably just at the four corners or something like that just to uh, stop it moving about. It's not going to move far because once it's in its housing it can't exactly go out because the heat shrink sleeve and strip goes right across there. You can just see it there. 
up against that side as well so it's not going to go anywhere so maybe a little bit at this end just to stop it in case it does want to move around and it should be safe enough well that's it all buttoned back up again so when I've got the power on and I didn't hear any bangs or anything like that no magic smoke I'm going to just press the button here and we've got a light so it's definitely doing something whether it's actually switching or not that's the next test so I've got a little table lamp here so I'll just plug that in so when the light is on it's the device is off because it's actually a little night light which is a little bit back to front but there we go so pr plug that in and I'll hit the button here and there we go table lamps working off again on again perfect right that's both units repaired the second unit had identical fault to the other one yes the fuse was touching the heat sink so I've gone and affected the identical repair at the second one and as you can see I don't know if you can see that blue LED the, the both are on there so both units are powering up okay um, one thing I noticed though uh, is that when one of them's on my uh, lamp here is uh, full brightness. When the other one's on it's about half brightness and what I didn't realise are these 300 watt units they're dimmable they don't use a really, you know, the the, the 2.9 uh, kilowatt one that I've got here, there's actually a relay inside here and you can hear it clicking when it goes off and on. Uh, so obviously it's non-dimmable. Uh, but these ones here are uh, dimmable. Um, anything from between 15 and 300 watt load capability, resistive loads, uh, and they're dimmable. If you hold the button on the top here, you can dim it locally. So let me just try that there. That's full brightness. And I think you can go the other direction. Yep, there we go. And that's it dimmed, so... Back up to full brightness again, and I'll try the other one. And up she goes. Full brightness. And right down again, yep. Okay, so the next thing to do is just to add it to my uh, local uh, Z-Wave network and I've got some lamp dimmers I can use up to 300 watts. Thanks for watching.